Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're continuing in the new season of a great cloud of witnesses and their insight into the secret place. In this episode, I want to share insight from Henry Grayton um, Guinness. He was, of course, related to that family of the beer makers, but he was a man who got saved and became a powerful evangelist for Christ. He saw thousands come to the Lord and, of course, was used mightily in the great revival of 1859. He is powerful insight, and I really pray that his, this message would really bless you, stretch you, and inspire you to stand and to see a fresh revival in this generation. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus, and we consecrate this message unto you, that Jesus may be glorified. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and give us a hearing heart, and speak to us a word in season, a now word, a right word that blesses and ministers life to each person. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and the church said, Amen. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and just underline that, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. As a, a person, a believer, as we abide in the secret place, we are found in him, in that new life. And in this place, we find that all old things pass away. We begin to step into the, the new things that He has for us. Many people talk and look at these verses, but they never experience them because we're not really taught how to come and abide in the secret place, how to have a relationship with the Lord when no one is looking, that is deep, and where He is all in all. He is everything. Um, Henry Grayton Guinness said this, and now let us fix our attention upon the subject. Union with Jesus. Union with Jesus. How sweet it sounds to the ear of the believer. Jesus to him is all. He loves his words. He loves his footprints. He loves everything about him. He loves the hope of being with him. That is a secret place, secret place dweller. When Jesus becomes this, not just something that we say, but really mean from the heart, because our lives demonstrate what we truly believe in the heart. And when He captures us, when He truly consumes us, so that we look to Him and we desire this union with Him, that our lives are lived focused, always waiting. And when I say waiting, eyes fixed, attending to Him, that I might hear that I might see, so that I might know, so that in all my doing, I may be perfectly aligned with His heart, perfectly glorifying Him. Guinness said this, But oh, especially, He loves the thought of being bound to Him in the bonds of intimate, indissolvable union. Come, such a one, come and meditate on thy union with the Lord. How much do you desire it? How much are you consumed that I got to know you, Jesus? You look at the relationship you have and say, God, is not deep enough. I don't know you enough. I don't have the intimacy. I remember working at a company a very long time, and I applied for a job, and I knew the interview wasn't going well. And I said to the person whom I'd known at the company, interacted with many times. What's wrong? What is your issue with me? The person turned and said, I don't know you. I stood stunned because how many times did we interact? How many times have we been at events together, done things together to say such a comment? I'd reached out to you. I'd pursued you. And see, many of us walk where we feel that if I seek him, will he pursue me? But the word is very clear. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. He's waiting, longing. In Song of Solomon 6, 3, I am my beloved's, and my beloved's is mine. 
Do you know that? This has got to go deeper than words to, I know there's a security in me. There's an absolute knowing in me. And every day this thing grows deeper. When you look at a marriage that's healthy and growing, there is a security. And every day, as they live life, there's a confidence. And that love grows in, in so many ways and has new levels to it, new expressions to it. Guinness says this, Does thou not find thyself washed in a wondrous bath of blood? and clothed in white, and standing in the temple by the altar of holy consecration, and married to the king's son. And canst thou not hear already the sound of great rejoicings? Why? What meanest these things? Is it really so? O oh, joy, joy, thou art married to the Lord. Do you know this? Are you looking and longing for that day of completion of this? Knowing that today I stand washed by the blood, my life under consecrated tomb. I don't think we've got that. See, when you marry someone, you consecrate your life to that person. I will not look to another. I will not be distracted. And in this hour, we've lost sight of consecration and holiness. So it doesn't mean much. But God is calling, and may the Spirit of God give us fresh understanding of consecration, of holiness and what it brings because see we don't walk in it and we walk in the responses of the consequences of a life sown to walking in the flesh reaping death and destruction and then we blame the lord and we do not understand because we're not looking carefully enough that it is the things that we're sowing and if we would learn to sow to the spirit if we would learn to consecrate and walk holy, which is truly that sowing holy completely to the Spirit, from this point and ever on, we would reap life in that abundant. God wants you while you're on this earth to enjoy life in that abundant, not just when we get to heaven, but here on this earth, to be a witness of life, a witness. Guinness said this, Yet it was before the foundations of the solid earth were laid, or ever God had formed the earth or the sea, that He chose us in everlasting purpose. Does not the Spirit say by the word that you were chosen Him before the foundation of the world? And again, are they just words? Are today, would you allow the Spirit of God to speak it to your very heart and reveal His heart? and the Father's pursuit of you, and the Father's thoughts of you that have been before anything was created. We cannot fathom the depth, the breadth, the height, the length of His love. It goes beyond. We will spend eternity trying to understand it. But today you can come and taste and experience it in the secret place as you lay hold of Him. This relationship must grow, and He wants it to grow deeper, more secure, every single day. New levels, new heights, that love swallowing, consuming, overwhelming. Everything we long for, and the security that enables us to be lifted, so that we can live the boldness, the, boldness, the confidence that He desires us See, many of us compensate and replace. Because we don't have the real boldness of the Spirit, we walk with a hardness and dictate. But when you're swallowed up, consumed in love, you walk with a boldness that's filled with tenderness and mercy like Jesus. I don't have to dictate. I don't have to control and manipulate because I've experienced the power and the touch of His love. And I understand if I yield that what comes out of me has that touch of love on it, and that will minister deeper, further. As I've said many times, it's not the many words that you preach, it's the depth of words, the anointing, the unction, the life, the touch that's on them that comes out of the relationship, the knowing of His love. In Hebrews 8, 12, For I will be merciful to their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Often because of sin, 
And the closer we draw, the more we become aware of our sin, our failings. And that can cause us to pull back. But God wants you to be so aware that He washes you, cleanses you, and that your answer is to run to, not from. In Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, and the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. His own sake. He is not looking to play a game and manipulate. His love is so real and true. And most of us have not experienced. We're not used to people being trustworthy. So he says, come into my secret place and let me demonstrate. Allow me to open your eyes to see through Jesus that you can know beyond any shadow of a doubt that you can fully, completely trust him. He will not fail you. He will not betray you, deny you. Guinness said, So strongly is the heart of God set upon it that He devises the plan of redemption, a plan so glorious in its design that in love and in wisdom shall both struggle for preeminence forever. By giving His chief treasure, He gains His chief desire. He pours out the blood of a holy heart upon the earth, makes just atonement for the unjust, and cast out sins into the depths of sea forever. That has to be personally experienced and known. Not just a knowing about, but a revelation so deep, so secure, and that is found and forged in the fire of the secret place. As you commit the time of seeking His face and saying, I'm here because you mean everything. I'm here because I love you. I'm here because you are all-consuming to me. I've got to know you. Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do something new, and now it will spring forth. Will not you be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. I don't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at today. It may be a bleak wilderness. It may be a desert. But as you connect with Him in the secret place, He is the Almighty God. He is more than able, and He so loves and cares for you that He wants to lift you and do something bigger in and through and for you. He just says, trust me. Come and experience. Come, taste and see that I am good. Come, follow me. Watch. Guinness said this, And now surely the work is done. Nothing now remains but to dress in her marriage array and place her beside Jesus on the throne. Ah, no, the way is still blocked. Christ may love and embrace us in our wretchedness, but will He marry us in that condition? It cannot be that Christ will take home to His palace one who is all sin and ignorance within, and all disease and rags without. Have we then to give up that hope that now has become dear to us, the hope of an everlasting union with the Holy One who has wooed and won our best affections. See, that's where so many of us stop and stumble because the enemy comes in a condemnation pointing and showing us the old, the failings, the faults, the sin. And every time we miss it, to paint the picture, and he uses facts. Guinness went on to say, Christ commenced the work of redemption 1,800 years ago, and he did not rest before he finished it. No, until it was done. His cry was, How am I straightened till it be accomplished? And he rested not until he was crucified on Mount Calvary and could cry with his last gasp, It is finished. And then he entered into his glory and sat down on the right hand of majesty and high. He so loved you recognizing you could not overcome, you could not qualify, you could not ever get to that place of being worthy. So loved you, He redeemed you. He went to the extreme of paying the absolute price, going through such punishment and pain that we cannot imagine to so demonstrate His love for you that He wants you to know in the secret place personally, one and one, by His Spirit, so that when you open the Word, His Word breathes on you, that you hear the heart cry of the Father towards you, and the acceptance because of the blood that He has of you, how He sees you, 
perfect and beautiful, without spot or wrinkle. We look at ourselves, our impurities, our faultings, our failings, our flaws. But he sees us through the blood, without spot or wrinkle. And knowing that in our weakness, if we will surrender, his strength is perfected. And he's able to do something so much greater, bigger, beyond, that it always demonstrates the mightiness, the power of his love. Guinness said, if I am a Christian, Christ and I are no longer two, but one. I said not that my clay tabernacle was one with Christ's glorious temple, but that I, the I that thinks and loves and hopes, the eye that shall soon be freed from its burdensome body, the immortal eye within, is now bound in the spiritual body of Jesus, and thus united to him intimately, that there are no more two but one. Can we get that? And see, as you wait, you twist and become one. And every moment that we dare to wait, eyes focused on him. And as we go and we do, eyes focused on him, waiting. Because he is everything. Because he is all in all. Always crying out more. Relationships have to be developed through communication, through fellowship, through intimacy. And that is in the secret place. That is through the time committed to him. Guinness said, just look at the vine and its branch. Is not the branch part of the vine? So the Christian is part of Christ. At the same time, is not the vine superior to the branch? So Christ is superior to the Christian. And these two things, the intimacy and superiority, are the very life of the Christian. That we live in a place of such humility, recognizing He is the Master, He is superior, and that we need Him. And that through intimacy of unity, we experience and receive the life from him. Guinness went on to say, I could not live one half hour by Christ unless was he was superior to me and as intimately united to me and as he is at this moment so superior to me that I am nothing and he is all in all and so intimate with me that it is only because he lives that I also live. It's in this place of such reckless abandon, of such an awareness of how great he is and how superior he is, that we know looking more to us and trying to live by our strength and a boasting in us. Because the greatest that I can bring will always fall short and always looks weak and nothing before his greatness. And he wants to pour into us and lift us and bring us into a place of becoming something polished and beautiful, perfected. Let me finish with this. Destroy the vine and the branch withers. So destroy Jesus and I die. Separate the branch from the vine and it withers. So separate me from Christ and I die. Stop the current of sap flowing from the vine to the branch and it withers. So stop the current of the spirit flowing from Christ to me and I die. Check the sap for a little in flowing from the vine to the branch and the fruit withers. So check the spirit for a little in the inflowing from Christ to me and my grace dies. We are so dependent, needing that constant flow from the spirit. That is why we must always, even as we're going and doing, be waiting and seeking fixed on Him, recognizing the need of Him. Always the seeking after, pursuing a developing, a deepening of the intimacy with Him, of the unity, knowing that we are one. We are meant to be one with Him. Oh, I pray that this message has blessed you. If it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe. And I thank you for that. And consider joining our prayer partnership program. For more information, please go to God's Generals and Revivals com and go to the partner page. I encourage you to check out more in the series, check out more on the how to wait upon the Lord or the secret place and may they help you develop a greater intimacy with the Lord. We need it in this hour. 
Amen. Well, thank you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.